orientation for the Don's OSCE exam. Uh, I will try to give my experience for how to prepare yourself for this exam, uh, to know more about the Don's OSCE, the Don's, uh, Don's Bar 2, and also to get an overview about the MRCS ENT, the Don's, what's the difference between them, how to prepare yourself for that. And at the final, also just give an orientation about my course to for preparation for Don's OSCE exam, okay? So we start with talking about the Don's exam, okay? Don's is a diploma of otolaryngology and head and neck surgery, and it is actually two parts. Part A is a multi uh, MCQs, okay? And nowadays it's an online due to the COVID uh, restrictions and all of these issues. And the part B, it's an OSCE exam, okay? Uh, different stations, manned and non-manned stations, nearly about, uh, nearly to 30 stations or 25 stations, okay? So for part A, it is MCQ and it is on the ENT. So the questions will be starting from the anatomy, everything related to the ENT. This is for part A and it's suppose after finishing the two parts, you will grant the DONS, Diploma of Otolaryngology and then Surgery, okay? And so, for the second is an MRCS ENT, okay? So MRCS ENT, there is actually some differences between, between it and the DONS. It is in the first part. The first part is supposed to be MRCS part A, okay? It's also an MCQ question and nowadays it's online also, but the only difference for us as an ENT, especially if we're talking about people who are practicing more than five or 10 years in ENT, this exam actually will be tested on the general surgery, okay? And a lot of basic questions of the surgery. Maybe in the exam, you just find nearly four or five MCQ related to the ENT and the remaining will be the general surgery, okay? So I think this is the only tricky things. Uh, but the part two will be the Don's OSCE, and after passing both parts, you will grant the MRCS ENT, okay? So this is two different approach. So now we will come to the next slide. So which pathway shall I take? The Don's or the MRCS ENT? What is the difference? What's the best for me, okay? So first, both of them actually are and postgraduate qualifications, both of them will add to your CV, okay? Uh, this is definitely, okay? DONS will be more easier for you as an ENT because even the first part will be an MCQ question related to your speciality. You will not struggle in studying. That's my idea. Uh, for the MRCS ENT, um, actually the, the problem may be in the first part, especially if you are practicing ENT for a long time, so you nearly forgot the issues related to the general surgery and this cool, uh, the colon and uh, all of the other things related to the general surgery. So this will be the trick. But you have to ask yourself a question. Why I'm taking this exam or what is my plan actually? If you are preparing yourself to work in the UK, so, uh, both of them actually uh, will add your CV in UK, but the, to be registered in the GMC, the quali the quali the postgraduate qualification, which is which will help you in the registration within GMC, then MRCS ENT. So if you have a DONS, you also have to get an MRCS ENT or PLAP to uh, to register with the GMC. But with the MRCS ENT, you can just directly go and register. To, to the GMC and later on to practice in the UK, okay? So uh, actually my opinion for you, if you are willing to work in UK, just take this shortcut direct to the MRCS ENT, start your career in the UK and after that prepare yourself for the FRCS and all of these issues. Okay, now I'm talking in details about the DONS exam, DONS part, uh, DONS part B, OSCE exam. What is the syllabus of the exam? How to prepare yourself for it? What's the tricks and tips? And what is the suggested textbook to prepare yourself for this exam? First of all, and this is actually a very important point, is this exam is an 
entry exam. It is not an exit exam, okay? So what I, what I mean by this is after this exam, you're supposed to join the ST3 training program. So you are going to start the ENT training program, okay? So, and starting your career and take more advanced than your knowledge. So it's totally different from the FRCS exam, okay? So why this is very important for you when you are going to prepare yourself is first, don't waste your time in the advanced information and these more advanced textbooks, okay? Because the exam actually assess your basic knowledge there is a lot, there are a lot of questions, uh, there is a lot of questions regarding the basic, uh, basic anatomy and uh, emergency, how you are going to deal with emergency, uh, ask about your approach. Let's just give you an example. If they bring you a question and, uh, and this is one of the non-manned stations and bring you a photo of a malignant ulcer in the tongue, and ask you a question, okay, what is your management plan? If you're going to as answer this question like, okay, I'm going to do a hemiglossectomy and bilateral neck dissection and later on uh, uh, radiotherapy, both or anything else, this is actually not an accurate answer, okay? So what's the best answer for this exam is you are actually at the level of SHO or mostly uh, this is the senior house officer. So you're not going to do a hemiglossectomy. So the answer should be like that. Okay, I'm going to do a scan, MRI scan with contrast or C scan with contrast and taking biopsy, send it to histopathology assessment and discuss this case in MDT meeting, multidisciplinary team. Okay, so this is the answer. Okay, and this is what, because that's why I'm, I'm again uh, st state this point because I met in my course, I have started this course for several rounds, and I met people who already failed in this exam, uh, and they are specialized, and actually some of them is a con ENT consultant in his country, but his knowledge actually is more advanced than the exam, so his answer is not suitable to this exam, okay? And even in his preparation for the course, he, invest his time in studying advanced information, textbooks, very big textbooks, and ignore the other simple topic, the anatomy, uh, the radiology, even uh, suture. There is a station scans about the suture and asking you about what is the difference between the sutures. So this is a very important point. And for the syllabus of the exam, it's actually manned and unmanned stations, and I think most of you know, this point for the manned station is a communication skills and clinical examination, okay? But for the non and the non manned stations is actually an image based question and cover all of the other topics: pathology, rhinology, head and neck, and general topics like anatomy, embryology, uh, histology, uh, instruments, all of these general topics, okay? So for the manned stations, uh, usually it is uh, four types. The first one would be history taking, okay, and uh, how to take a history properly, uh, how to take it in a proper manner. Maybe you'll be asked to also give a differential diagnosis to the examiner and discuss with it, or explain to the patient the plan of management, or maybe sometimes the history taking is combined with an examination stations or combined with any other station. So it is, it's a compost stations, okay? Or the other stations would be breaking bad news, how are you going to deal with this sensitive uh, case? How you are going to uh, tell the patient something which is really shock to him in a proper manner and how to deal with even with the angry patients, uh, with his emotion, okay? And the third station will be taking consent and the last station will be also uh, will be also how to examine, okay? Uh, examination. Uh, according to the recent uh, exam regulations, and this is for the upcoming October exam, uh, the manned stations actually, uh, they reduce the number to four station only. And for the clinical examination, there will be no ear examination. This is for the October exam. 
But um, my advice is just to prepare yourself. As general, we don't know what will be the situation next March, uh, next exam, or later on. Maybe the COVID will reduce. Maybe it will not. But we hope that it is. So that's actually for the Mandy station. And the key point for the Mandy station is to practice and practice and practice. This is the key point to how to pass the Mandy station without practice. It's it's nonsense at all. You you will not if you just do it by yourself. You don't have a study partner. You don't have someone to practice with him. I don't know. I don't think that you will pass this man station. And for the non man stations nowadays, also according to the COVID restrictions, this exam would be an online exam. Okay. And uh, for example, for next for the upcoming October exam to be in a super day, nineteenth of October. Okay. And it will be online. And this is randomly from 20 to 23 stations, okay? It is, uh, some of them will be uh, bringing a photo and clinical scenarios followed by short essay question, uh, lab results and scenarios and also short essay questions, bring you a video, for example, for a vocal cord mobility or something or, vocal or a laryngeal examination or anything and ask you a question or radiology, okay? And as you see, this is the most common uh, situation. So about nearly 10 of these will be clinical photos and three will be clinical scenarios. So we are talking about maximum 13 station of 23 stations will be ENT, okay? And the other stations will be all, will be mainly a basic knowledge or general topics like anatomy, radiology, uh, audiology, instrument, histology, and written communication skills, how to write an operative note, discharge note, chart summary, or general like sutures, or medications, or diathermy, or laser, or anything else. All of these things are actually, if you check the, um, the website of Intercollegate, uh, you will find in the syllabus of Don's exam, all of these points are mentioned already in the syllabus. So for now, my station, they bring you a photo like that, hearing aid like that, or cholesteatoma, or this photo after doing a neck uh, dissection, or an ear surgery, or as you see, the last photo for the cancer larynx, or fracture, even fracture is a bone, and ask you how to identify the structure that you have, followed by some of short essay question, okay? Uh, what is the suggested textbooks? Okay, for this exam, this is actually my suggestion. The first row, this is a suggestion for an ENT. Uh, you don't have to study all of them. I, uh, I recommend to choose one of these textbook and start studying from it, okay? Either bullet points in ENT or Oxford specialist or key topics in otolaryngology and ENT secrets. But the most important three top, uh, books is one of these three uh, books, key topics or Oxford specialist or bullet points in ENT, okay? And for the general topics, we have this color atlas of anatomy and uh, uh, the most important, uh, actually the advantage of this point is you will have, uh, you will, uh, yeah. sorry, you'll have a cadaver of the cadaver so you'll be able to uh, see it in the cadaver and and this is will be actually adding uh, adding out of points i will answer all of the question at the end uh, of the session so if you have any question just type your question in the discussion and at the end of the uh, at the end of the lecture we will talk together about the suggested book and imaging for otolaryngologists, okay, and this is an atlas for the instrument and the NICE guidance. You have to check this website to be familiar with the last guidelines for any topics, okay, because sometimes the UK practice is totally different from your practice in your home country. I'm just give you an example, and this example I give it every orientation session, okay, management of but that's medial diffusion, okay? So according to the NICE guidelines, you have to wait for three months, okay? And after that, arrange for a myringotomy with ventilation tube insertion. So there is no rule for antibiotic. There is no rule of uh, local decongestant or steroids, all, all of this issue. So if the questions comes and ask you about also, for example, mention three lines or two lines of uh, treatment for the otitis medial diffusion, and you mentioned antibiotic and steroids or anything else, which is actually mentioned in other guidelines, for example, in American guidelines, 
and even maybe in your in your country in your practice in your homeland you will you are using this uh, medication and you get the results with it but this exam is according to the uk practice so you have to check the nice uh, guidance every time okay this is just a textbook and this is totally different from oski textbook okay so my advice for if you're going to go for the dons exam you have to prepare yourself first with a one month to just get an overview from a textbook okay build a solid knowledge okay then go to the oski question or the oski books to train yourself okay because usually the exam is every every exam will be different okay and this OSCE questions actually maybe you will find it in the exam maybe not so you have to get actually a broad knowledge and the wide base before you're going to the exam uh, if anyone has any question as i mentioned just write it in the chat and answer at the end of the session uh, this is. so how much time do i need to study and prepare myself to the OSCE exam this is a very important question okay i can say so if you are an ENT special uh, um, specialist and you are practicing ENT already more than two years okay what you need is nearly three months okay and uh, at least every day three hours per day okay so just to practice yourself right? uh, this is including pre preparing from the textbook and from the OSCE uh, question and also practice and demand the station so this is just roughly so three months is enough but it needs from you also to a commitment every day and the second important is to get to get a study partner because you need uh, you have to practice every day every day even for seven minutes for yourself and seven minutes so we are talking about 15 minutes maximum or 20 minutes maximum but in a daily manner so you will you will you will get used to these uh, man stations and you'll feel okay with it okay so for our course don's master course is actually an intensive course we are going to provide your focused revision for the don's oski exam okay uh, this course is a comprehensive and we are covering all the man station and non man station it is not only for two or three days no it is for 10 weeks or maybe more so we're starting from from the bottom to reaching to the top we're dealing for the communication skills so you'll get an exclusive change of weekly practice on communication skills with the tips and tricks for the best approach different clinical scenarios how to deal with a challenging situation with the reluctant patient and also the don's curriculum okay this is will be at a, a video a video library and this is will be available offline from the day you're subscribed till the day of the exam okay containing all of the detailed anatomy pictures and it is an exam oriented and we cover actually i made these videos from all of the textbooks i have mentioned so this is will save time for you and the last thing will be don's atlas atlas for the instruments and also a handout for the communication skills you the plan would be on 10th week okay so for this 10 week we are there will be a recorded sessions and this is will be uh, we will keep monitoring through google classroom so every week you will get a uh, follow-up with uh, uh, through google classroom about the assignment if there is any assignment or something and every week we have a session from two to three hours to practice so and within this practice you will start to learn and see uh, some of weak, po uh, weak points for yourself and for your friend for your colleague so with the time within 10 weeks i think at the end you will get used to the, the man stations will not be a big deal for you okay so we are covering all of the other topics as i mentioned the autology rhinology head and neck and pediatric radiology and general topics and this is actually the sample of the slides of uh, the videos as you see where it is an image based so i'm trying to put a lot of images not an information so because this is the key of the question you have to know what is it actually to identify it what is it 
So, and finally, there will be a mock exam at the end of the course, and this is, will be an online mock exam based on the questions from the previous exams and the, brief, and the exam recalls, and there, uh, a real exam environment. Uh, there will be three online mock exams for the non mandate station and one uh, on a mock exam for the mandate station, which will include five mandate stations. Every session will take seven minutes, okay? And at the end of this mock exam, you will get a report to identify your weak points and the way to improve it. So why to choose us for to prepare yourself for the non exam? The commitment. You'll be followed up through a WhatsApp group and Telegram groups, answer your questions every day, will be available till from the day of subscription till the end before the exam. The second thing, it's an exam oriented. I'm not going to, uh, to uh, teach you all of the NT curriculum, okay? I'm just talking about um, exam oriented. I'm talking about the, the topics that usually comes in the exam not to waste your time with the more details and more advanced information that you will not use it in your exam. And the third thing is it's actually an ideal for the busy doctor. So it's a, because the lecture are comprehensive, prepared from three textbooks, ideal for those whose time is critical and not able to cover all of the required talks. What you need to do is just to study from the lectures and from the video that will be provided. Um, you will get the chance of more than 20 hours of live discussion on the communication skills or even uh, some session to discuss a question from the exam recalls regarding several topics. You'll get a handout including all of the information uh, and the tips and tricks for the communication skills and the instruments and how to study it. And the last things will be the mock exam which will be available and under a real exam environment and also based on the questions from the previous recall. So we are trying to put you in a, a similar environment according to our experience. Until now, we give our nearly six rounds of this course and the exam. We get a high success rate with our candidates. So we hope that we will able to give you the pass to this DONS exam, okay? Uh, we have also, we are a partner of uh, Dr. Salah course, okay, MRCS was providing him our says part A, and this is the website of him. He's one of the, uh, this, it's actually a group that giving an MRCS part A, and I think it will be a good option for anyone who's an ENT because they will provide you with the recalls, not to uh, waste your time in studying a textbook of the general surgeon and just stuck to this course and you will pass the exam shot. 